Hello, welcome back to the Friday Foursome. You thought it had gone away, it hadn't. The Friday Foursome is back, and it's back with a vengeance. Um, yeah, the Friday Foursome took a little bit of an unplanned hiatus. Um, I said I was going to switch it to a, a monthly thing. That's still in place. <laughs> did bring it back after a month, though, did I? Uh, things got in the way. A lot of uh, um, thing, family things got in the way. Obviously, Play Blackpool got in the way. And a lot of it editing video, blah, 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 to do. I'm not going to bore you with the details. But Friday Foursome 6 is here. Right now, here. So stay <coughs> tuned. And I've got a good question for you. I've been racking my brains for a good question because I was... I'm going to be honest with you. The last question, I was disappointed with the response. We got six great responses. Six really good responses, and I love the way that everyone chose to angle it a different way and the way they see nostalgia. If you missed the Friday Foursome Part 5, links down in the description box, obviously, with all the other uh, Friday Foursome previous. But the question was, technology you miss. So these were maybe specific items. Uh, one person answered it in a very good, a very cool way, actually, a unique way. We'll come to him in a minute, but the, the entrance for this month. It is a month now, isn't it? It's nearly six weeks since the last Friday Foursome. Oh! I'm addressing that. But we had JL76 Gaming, as always, with a, with a, with a response. Kit171. John Gage with his uh, inaugural Friday Foursome. So welcome, John. I think it was your first one. It probably might be a second, actually. Sorry. Memory. Acidonia150 always comes through for me. And a couple of new guys coming in. Mark, Joy of Sticks, and 16-bit uh, J. Thank you very much, guys, for your uh, responses. They were all brilliant to watch. And um, I like the way that um, I was expecting a few answers to be replicated. And a few were, uh, like the VCR, for instance. Uh, but people took a good range of this. And bits of they picked bits of tech out from the past that, um, that, that, that were different from each other, which is great. So, the vote winners. Well, we're going to pick four this time. Four for the Friday Force, and because we have a joint third place. And first in at third place is the new entrant, 16-bit J, with three votes on my Facebook page. And let's listen to his video response for the Friday Force and Part 5. So, uh, this is a response to Nova Bugs um, Friday Force. It is technologies that you miss. So, I'm going to start off with the first one I've got here light gun technology for home video game systems. Now, I know some of you are immediately going to say, well, it still happens in the arcade, still have them. Yeah, I know arcade still has them. One of our cinemas, it had them up until a while ago because we saw a time crisis and we were like really excited and we played it. And we were like, that was going to be like a new cinema ritual. We'd go cinema, then we'd play on Time Crisis, and we'd have a blast. But it actually, um, the last time we went cinema, it was gone. So it's no more. I know the Wii has games, I've got two here the Resident Evil games, and it has uh, House of the Dead as well. So it's kind of. Uh, the technology is still somewhat out there, but not really uh, in homes anymore. And it's kind of like the Wii games are not, for me, they're not quite the same as the old light gun. Because I mean, the GCOM 45 is a pretty cool looking gun. The NES Zapper is cool looking. The Master System's Light Phaser is cool looking. So, yeah, and it's kind of like a shame that they don't seem to release them anymore. I mean, Time Crisis, one of my favourite games for the PlayStation 1. And it's a technology that uh, seems to have bitten the dust and I'm kind of wondering is there no way of getting it to work with LCD TVs even if they have to calibrate the the reaction times a little bit differently or some, or use a sensor bar like the Wii does. But I don't know, it just seems to not be quite the same. I don't know if in the Resident Evil games you can turn the crosshair off or in House of the Dead. One of them's got a crosshair, I can't remember which one, so that's kind of... Taking that off would kind of change that for me. Anyway, so I'll move on to the second technology that I miss, and it's I, I'm 
this may be a little bit iffy, I may not be counted in this case, but for me it's practical technology in movies. Now, one, one of my favourite films, Robocop. Uh, very gory, lots of practical effects, you know, and most, the majority of them look really good. I mean, the stop motion Ed 209 for the time was really, really good, and I think it still holds up today. Um, but nowadays, when I was watching it, like the last stand when I saw it in the cinema, um, not so much on the Blu ray, but in the cinema, the blood, it seemed like vapor, and it's kind of like, is blood really like that if you get shot? I mean, I've, I've never been shot, I've never seen anybody get shot in real life, or even seen footage of a real person being shot, uh, nor do I really want to, but the vapor thing just didn't seem quite right to me, whereas I prefer the, the old squib method. So hopefully that counts as a technology, and as well as the, the models they would use instead of CGI, like in the, the original Star Wars trilogy, they used um, puppets instead of CGI, and then in the prequel trilogy, they used CGI, and now for me, I would take the puppets of the original films over the prequels any day of the week, and it's not just because of the characters, it is the puppets themselves, they just look like they're actually there. So yeah, that's my second one, it's uh, practical effects. The third one, now, again, I'm not sure if this is quite a technology that may still actually exist, but I haven't seen one in years. But years ago, we used to get a, a little, mo when I was a kid, we used to get a motorcycle, and it would have a little plastic uh, thing with teeth in it, and you could pull it out, and the bike would just shoot off straight away and go really fast. And the thing they're called ripcord bikes, um, not sure. And you used to find them in places like Poundland. And so when you saw them in Poundland, it was there, and then they just seemed to have died off and disappeared completely. And I always thought these were brilliant when I was a kid. I, I had several, and I loved them. Unfortunately, they've not got them anymore. You know, certain things you have to throw away as you get older, which is a little bit disappointing, but it's life really, isn't it? Um, so yeah, that's my third one. Now, my fourth one um, is, I wish I still had it, it's, well, I do have it, it's up in the attic, but I can't actually get it, get in the attic to get it, because I don't have a ladder. But it's the mini disc players. Now, whether, I don't know if you remember back in the early 2000s or the late 90s, Sony, Sony's the one I remember, I had a Sony one. They brought out, a, it was a, a mini disc format, I'm not sure if Sony actually made it or not, but it was basically like a, a CD in clay, in, in ca encased, encased even, in a plastic, it kind of looked like a floppy disc with a CD inside it. And I think there was a bigger version at some point with DVD-Rs and, and that in it, but I'm not entirely sure. So, yeah, I thought we. Um, that I thought it was going to take off, and that's how our video games are going to look. I, I will put a picture of uh, a mini disc and a mini disc player, you know, somewhere around here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I always thought it would take off and that would be brilliant. And I always thought it was a little cool thing. I mean, I completely understand why MP3 players replaced it. Because you could all, um, 18 minutes or slightly more when you compress them a certain way. Which uh, some of my friends who are music, um, music aficionados, they, they will say they could tell a difference in between them. But I honestly, I thought the quality was fine and I accepted it. So yeah, and I thought it was like a it was like a really cool little device, and I literally thought that was the way media was going to go, and it's almost like having cartridges again, which is you know kind of cool. So yeah, those have been my four technologies that I miss. Hopefully they're all okay. So Jay there with some really good choices actually. Um, light guns, I certainly agree with you there, mate. Yeah, light gun technology. I'm. I stumbled across a couple of years ago actually, I never realised that light guns didn't work with LCDs and I, very naive of me, I mean this is going back quite a few years now, 
And of course, you know, te you know, technologically speaking, it's obvious why they wouldn't work. I mean, the LCD, completely different technology. But yeah, like he says about the gun design, it's, I've got the Namco G-Con 45 upstairs as well, Time Crisis, like he, like he mentions there. Classic. The Wiimote isn't the same, he's right. Um, I'm not sure, you know, why didn't they ever mm, adopt a sort of gun shape for the Wiimote? Maybe, the, maybe they did. I'm not sure. I never saw one. But anyway, great choice there, great choice. And practical effects as well, he mentions. Highlighting Robocop and Star Wars, of course. Obviously, uh, Star Wars is a, a big talking point when it comes to effects and CGI versus practical effects. And the biggest, obviously, is Yoda. Is Yoda you prefer Yoda as the classic Jim Henson puppet or the CGI version that you saw him in two of the prequels? Not the first one. But then again, most of us forget the first film, don't we? Most of us forget The Phantom Menace. I mean, I've even forgotten what it's called. Just I've just said it. I've just forgotten what it's called. <laughs> Rip Toys, interesting one. <laughs> yeah, remember them. Personally, no nostalgia for them, but fair play. Um, and the mini disc, bless the mini disc. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, soon, very superseded, very quickly, wasn't it? The mini disc. And you remember the micro cassette as well? There was a, there was a battle, wasn't there, at the time? Where it was Philips, I think it was, came up with the micro cassette, and Sony had the had the mini disc and it was technically the mini disc that won but of course then it was quickly superseded by um us uh, mp3 so anyway thank thank you for that jay fantastic picks now we go on to our joint third third place as well and this is kit 171 mike from across the pond with his choices so my first one here and this is easily without a doubt got to be the biggest one for me of my four uh, I do have one of these again, and I still have quite a lot of tapes, but I miss these so much, and I've tried my best before uh, in the past to explain exactly why I like uh, these so much, but for me, number one, and it is probably without a doubt number one, is VCRs and VHS. The two go together. Now, the reason for this is I've always really liked uh, VCRs as well as VHS format. I It's kind of hard to explain why. Yes, it is partly because I grew up with it, but it's also because it's very mechanical. I like that kind of stuff. Is why I like watches so much, for example, and cars before they had a lot of technology in them. It's just something basic about it I really like, and you can actually fix it if you need be. And on top of that, there's so much stuff that you can only find on VHS, and still to this day, only on VHS is it, it makes it very interesting and entertaining to find all kinds of things on there that you won't find anywhere else still. Not to mention, it also has some... It, the other reason for it is it has a very particular feel, I find, to it. And I've heard other people say this too. Things like that are analog, have a very specific feel to them that you don't get replicated from digital means. Just the same as like when you're listening to music on a vinyl record as opposed to a CD or especially a digital file of that song. It's kind of the same thing a little bit. But to me, VCRs and VHS has always been special to me more than just because I grew up with it. It's just something I've always really liked a lot and I always found the technology really cool. And I miss that they've completely gone away. Yes, you can find VHS tapes and VCRs for extremely cheap, but there's nothing new being put out on them. That and I always thought it was cool that you could just get a really cheap blank tape that you can record six hours of stuff on there. I still have a lot of blank tapes around where I have all kinds of stuff on it. I got one that's got Robot Wars on it, and then right after it, it's got like three episodes of the Knight Rider. I always miss doing that kind of thing, and VCRs and VHS is something I've missed for a very long time now, and I, I, I really miss it being around and being current, but times change, of course. Which kind of also ties in with the second one, and now here's one I have that is video game related, and my second uh, piece of technology I miss is cartridges. Now, yes, they can't hold as much as Blu-ray discs or anything like that we have now, or even just gallowing a digital game, but I always liked cartridges because they look kind of cool to me. They all had different designs and shapes. Some were gigantic like the Neo Geo ones, and some looked very stylized which was really cool to me uh, with certain ones like say the Genesis Mega Drive is very curved, very aerodynamic but more than that there's no moving parts so that also means your consoles uh, last longer less to go wrong no moving parts means less that can break and you know anymore you could have one to mention this myself they could make games on SD cards which essentially are nothing more than kind of like cartridges I mean the 3DS does it 
but true game cartridges, games on cartridges, I really miss that. Uh, again, it's kind of like the VHS. Uh, I, there's something about it I've always really enjoyed. You just stick it in, and assuming it's clean, of course, it'll just go. And it'll stay going. You don't have to worry about lasers burning out or anything like that, moving parts, the laser track getting all gummed up. It's so simple, and it works well. I just really like that, and some of my favorite consoles, uh, one of the reasons is because they use cartridges. It's a little thing, but to me it's a big thing. I've always liked uh, cartridges for games and systems that use cartridges. Again, because they're also, they, they're different for each system, as well as just uh, the games I've played on them. So that's another part too, but cartridges are another uh, technology, at least a game-specific technology, that I do miss a lot, and I know many of us do. Especially this third one. This is probably going to be a very common one that a lot of us say, but it's true. And I like arcades a lot, so number three for me is just, in general, arcades. Or let's say, proper arcades, unlike what most of us can find these days. As I've mentioned, there's about three kind of arcades I can still go to. Only one technically would actually qualify as what you would classify as a arcade and such. But uh, arcades like they used to be. Like uh, late 90s, backward. That kind is the ones I mean. I really do miss those. It's so much fun going there and seeing all these different kinds of machines, as well as pinball machines, too. They had them in there. And all these different kinds of games, you can go in there, play them, and play with random people, and you have a really good time. I, especially racing games, it was a lot of fun racing against other people in there. But these days, you really don't get jack for arcades, especially outside of Japan. That's really the only place anymore that still has arcades in any kind of full force, or decent arcades, I should say. But, uh... Yeah, that's something really big, at least, again, in terms of video games that I miss a lot in terms of technology. Arcades had some of the coolest games in them. Stuff you could never find at home and still can't find at home. Or in the case of the ones that they did bring a home version of, were never nowhere near close enough to what the arcade version was and nowhere near as awesome. So, arcades had that kind of special gaming experience that I miss. But, uh... I don't know, it's one of those things, again, that I really wish would come back, but probably never will. It's just the way it is. Now, this last one is not game-related, but you might find it kind of odd, but I like cars a lot, and this is a very specific thing that cars used to have, and it's probably never going to come back either for whatever reason, even though there's nothing preventing it. It's just they don't want to design cars this way anymore, I guess. But uh, I always thought this was one of the coolest things any car could have, and makes a car instantly that much cooler, as many people say. Uh, and there's quite a lot of really good examples of cars that have pop-up headlights like this, but number four for me for uh, technology I miss would be pop-up headlights on a car. Now, there's a lot of cars out there, older cars, of course, that have pop-up headlights, but there was even a few in the late 80s that had pop-up headlights. The Porsche 928 had pop-up headlights, and that was one of the things that made it cool. One of my favorite cars of all time, the Lancia Stratos, uh, that has pop-up headlights. The, uh, the Nissan or Datsun, depending on where you are, 280Z, that thing had pop-up headlights, the earlier ones anyway. Quite a lot of really cool cars had pop-up headlights, and let's not forget the 60s Corvettes. One of the things that made them really cool was pop-up headlights. The other reason I like them is because it also makes the car look much more aerodynamic. When you're not using the headlights, they're hidden, they're protected, the glass can't get chipped and broken, and dead bugs splattered all over there. It's another reason I always thought pop-up headlights were cool. But, uh... It, to me, it's just a cool factor. I really, really miss pop-up headlights on cars. They look so cool, and anymore when I see cars that uh, go by, older ones that have pop-up headlights, every time I see that, all I think is, man, I like that car, and man, I wish so much someone would make a car again that has pop-up headlights. I keep expecting one of these like crazy supercar companies, like Pagani or something like that, to make a car that has pop-up headlights. Like I said, I looked into this, there's technically nothing preventing them from doing that. It's not some kind of, like, road uh, rule or regulation that prevents them from doing that, like having a wood steering wheel, which I missed that too, but, uh, pop-up headlights, I think, is something that was so cool, and it was also a practical thing. Like I said, it was more aerodynamic, it hid the headlights away and it protected them, but, uh, they can go wrong, of course, but they looked so cool. To me, that was, like, instant cool points to give a car if it had pop-up headlights. It's so nice, but uh, that's another thing that's long gone now, too, unfortunately. But I miss it a lot. Anytime I see a car with them on there, it's, you know, it makes me think of that kind of stuff. 
Oh well. But there you go. Those are the four pieces of technology that I miss a lot, and I do really miss these a lot. So just as a quick recap, uh, my first one, which is a big one for me, is v uh, VCRs and VHS. Second one is games on cartridges, or just cartridges in general. Three is arcades, proper arcades, and four, pop-up headlights on cars. So, so like I said, the, v the VHS, the, the video recorder, yeah, it's, you know, it's something that, um, you know, I miss the video recorder, I miss the VHS, it does, it has something over the DVD and recorder and obviously the invisible uh, nature of um, hard drive video recording, which we all use now, I mean, you're watching this recorded in that very manner, uh, and you couldn't do that with VHS, of course, but yeah, there's something about it that um, is very nostalgic, so I know exactly what Mike's talking about. Remember, obviously, my first pirate videos were watched uh, in that manner, and we used to copy, the, you know, when you had the two video recorders together, and you can copy one to the other, and all these little tricks you would do. Good times. I always remember messing around with the tracking a lot to get the picture right. Oh, sorry, bit oh, I've got to get that out. Uh, sorry, it was brewing up there. Apologies for that. Anyway, and of course he mentions cartridges now. Oh well, no, no, nobody is a retro gamer if they don't miss cartridges because cartridges are for me the prime gaming format. Um, even though I grew up in the Amstrad and it was tapes, when the cartridge came along, that was it. it. That was a game. It was a cartridge. It was bang, slot, job done. It can't ever be superseded by discs for me, certainly not by the invisible DLC, hard drive kind of thing. Um, unfortunately, yeah, technology moves on and uh, they are expensive to produce and uh, they just they, they don't fit in the modern world anymore, which is a shame. Uh, we still have them, of course, like Mike mentions, so the DS and stuff, the Vita and things like that, but it's not really, a, it's more of a card, isn't it? More of a, more of a glorified SD card than anything else definitely missed cartridges so yeah great call on that one uh, he also mentions um, pop-up headlights on cars and uh, I'm with you on that one as well I didn't even think of, of of the technology used in cars when I was doing thinking of mine but uh, going back to it when he said pop-up headlights I mean, they were just uber cool weren't they I mean my favorite car from the 80s was always Kit himself as he, he, he alludes to his own name um, the Trans Am Pontiac uh, 82, 1982, uh, with the pop-up headlights, uh, brilliant. And uh, one of my favourite cars of all time, of course, has pop-up headlights, and that's the Fer Ferrari F40. So they are really cool, um, and something that uh, yeah is is lacking nowadays in car design, isn't it? Indeed. And he agrees with me, of course, on arcade cabinets as well. Already spoken about them, so I'm with you on that one. So, we go to our second place this time. Our second place, oh, excuse me, over there. and our second place is the Joy of Sticks uh, with his first video response, and I think he picks up on a few of my former F Friday foursomes uh, on his original video as well. Um, I will see for this for this specific video. I'm going to cut that bit out, but and listen to him talk about the technology that uh, he misses this week. He's uh, asked us for four pieces of technology that we miss. Wow, that was a really hard question to answer because, you know, we're retro gamers. We're wired that way to have this nostalgia for old stuff. So there's a million and one things that aren't current that I love um, that you could say I miss. But then, do you really miss them? Because you can still use them, right? <laughs> I'm incredibly nostalgic about the Atari ST but it's still right here and I can still use it so why would I say I miss that so yeah I, it was kind of racking my brains about this and and I came up with something that I do really miss and it's not because those things aren't around anymore you can still use those things for sure but it's because how technology has advanced that changes the way we interact with it and what I miss is the individuality of technological items. I know I'm going to find this really difficult to explain, but what I mean by that is we used to use a different gadget, a different item, depending on 
the job we needed to do. If we wanted to communicate with someone, we'd use the phone or we'd write a letter. Um, if we wanted to listen to some music, we'd whack out a Walkman or put on a record. Um, if we wanted to play some games, we'd, we'd use a console or a computer to play some games. If we wanted to take a photo, we'd use a camera. If we wanted to take a video, we'd use a camcorder. Do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Whereas now, we have these two or three devices in our lives that just do everything. Uh, and that's no bad thing. That's, you know, it's a real convenience. It's really nice to have everything you need in your pocket. Do you know what I mean? If you've got a smartphone, you've got a computer, a camera, a video camera, a games machine, um, a letter writing device, um, word processing. You've got everything you could possibly need in your pocket. And that's amazing. Uh, if you'd have told me about that when I was you know, a kid, eight years old or whatever, 1988, I'd have thought, yeah, you've been watching too much Star Trek, mate. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. But it is, and it's fantastic. But it, it does take away a bit of the character of technology. Do you know what I mean? We, I miss the physicality of things. Um, I'm um, The prime example of that is music, because I'm a, a Spotify subscriber. I love music. And Spotify is amazing because I've got this world of music. Any any device that I log on to, my iPad, my phone, my computer, my, even my TV, whatever I'm using, I have a world of music just there, right at my fingertips, or just a search away, and there's something brand new or an old favourite of mine, or you know, it's all there. But it doesn't quite compare to leafing through a load of old dusty vinyl and pulling out something that you, oh, you I remember this I haven't played this for ages and getting it out and putting it on and placing the stylus down and hearing the crackle and the the smells of the of the fusty you know, oh, wow <laughs> I could talk about this for ages but do you see what I mean it's those kind of experiences that we miss we've kind of traded them in for convenience Gaming's the exact same, and emulating is a, a prime example of that. It, you know, at my fingertips right now, I'm sitting at my computer, I could play virtually any game from history. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I could fire up an MSX emulator and play that. Or, you know, if I wanted to play the ST, I could fire up the Steam emulator and stick on IK Plus and away I go. But there's something soulless about that somehow. Um, again, it's convenient and it's great for discovering new things, but I tend to play for 10, 15 minutes when I do that. Uh, and a bit like music, I do the same. I tend to listen to like a minute of a track and then skip to the next one and skip to the next one. When I'm on Spotify, there's like, it's distracting. There's too much out there for me to really focus in and concentrate on one thing. And gaming is exactly the same. Um, without that kind of technology, the old technology of getting out a box and getting out the floppy disk and whacking it in the drive and sitting down and plugging in the joystick and stuff without that physicality i i find myself flitting all over the place whereas when i get a real console out and hook that up and play it i sit and play it for a long time uh, and it, it's the same thing with communication you know text messages and emails are just uh, you know they're really convenient they're really handy but they're just uh, toss you know toss away throw away little bits of snippets of information whereas you know if you sit down to write somebody a letter you really pour your heart and soul into this letter um but yeah i've, I've realized that i've rambled on for quite some time <laughs> but there you go that that's what i miss about old technology not necessarily the technology itself because it's still there and we can still use it if we choose to it's just that how technology is has come on how it's progressed means we don't have these separate bits of kit anymore that really focus us in on the experience. Does that sound really poncy and ridiculous and uh, first world problems? It probably does. But that that's how I feel. It, I always find it much more rewarding to get out a dedicated piece of kit to do something than I do to just use my computer or my mobile phone or my tablet or whatever. So there you go. That's what I miss about old technology. I know we're supposed to come up with four, but that does kind of encompass four 
sort of you know your music player uh your game devices your um the actual physical act of writing a letter and one more i don't know <laughs> but yeah you get the idea anyway you get the idea anyway so it was good to see uh, Mark take it in a little bit of a different direction there. Um, great explanations as well. Um, overall, he's saying into the individuality of items ha uh, is, is no longer a, a premise anymore. It's, it's no longer needed because we've got all-in-one devices that do everything. And I've taken it like this. <laughs> I've split it down for him. Uh, because he, he makes some great explanations there, and it's a t I agree with it. one of the things I've always been an advocate of is tactile nature of uh, the retro stuff. I mean, that's something that really, really heightens the nostalgia is the tactile nature of things, and this goes for the four things that I've deciphered from that, and the four things that I have taken from it. He mentioned he mentions three of them, which obviously is um, records, vinyl specifically, uh, with the idea of actually putting them on and. The, the actions of how he describes and all that physical tactile nature it's 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 part of the experience isn't it it's not just the music it's just part of the experience nowadays we just go click bang music plays great we've got the music but something's missing from it if you're from that era from the modern people it, it, they probably have no idea what i'm talking about they probably well, if you listen to the bloody music well yeah but back then we had sleeves and a record and a needle and you had to get this thing working properly and it was all a bit of an experience so and also taken from that um, old school consoles uh yeah you know i mean i'm talking retro consoles here cartridge based setting them up specific nature one thing not like the modern consoles which can do you know, like the ps4 xbox one wii u can do multiple different things yes they can play games of course but you can watch your telly on them you can browse the internet on them you can watch me on youtube and him and them and everyone else on you you know um so i get that as well i'm gonna rip out another one that he, he highlighted but mentioned at the end which was obviously individual computers not a pc we're talking the old micros we're talking his computer for instance the st my computer the uh, the uh, amiga it's an amiga there ooh, 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 i would have been slapping the face for nova bug um the um, amstrad and uh, other people you know the commodore 64 and the spectrum and the amiga like i've already said and the msx and all the pacific individual microcomputers things like that and of course the final one letter writing have a letter whatever ever wherever happened to writing letters we don't do them much doing to email and text messages and WhatsApp and social media and whatnot. So write a letter. It's an experience. That's why most of us have got really crap handwriting. Really pat bad. It's just got really bad hand. Look at the state of my look, that's my handwriting. It's fucking shocking. Anyway, so that was second place. So thank you very much, Mark, for that joy of sticks. Uh, really good um, new twist on on the answer there. Really enjoyed it, it was great. Um, and finally the winner! This Friday foursome is JL76 Gaming and his choices for the technology that he misses. Three of these are uh, bits of technology I no longer have and one of them, well, all four actually I don't have but the last one is not um, technology that's no longer with us, it's just that I don't have one but I'll explain when I get to it. So the first one is the Walkman. Now this could be any make, obviously, um, it, or it could be a tape or a CD, but I'm thinking more specifically about the tape ones for the tapes, because those are the ones that hold the most nostalgia for me. Uh, I used to say I absolutely love having personal stereo, I used to get a better one, whenever I had the money I would upgrade it a little bit and get a better one. I used to love just listening to my personal stereo on the bus on the way to work, and um, in bed at night and stuff like that and obviously in this day and age it's been replaced with a iPod or whatever, MP3 player but um, I just thought that technology back then just it's wonderful the fact you could listen to music on the move it's just such a revel revel I can't say that word, revolutionary 
um, piece of kit. And the one I had, the one of the ones I had latterly before I upgraded to a CD Walkman, um, you could put the tape in it and there's a little device in it that would automatically flip it to the other side so you, could, you didn't have to actually take the tape out to <laughs> turn up to get the other side to play. Also it had the graphic equalizers and like an FM AM radio on it. It was just fantastic really. Yeah, fond memories of the personal stereo, so that's the first choice. Second choice, actually I st I'm, I'm, I've still got one of these up, up, mm -hmm. in, up in my spare room, mm -hmm. but it's, it's out of commission mm -hmm. and it's not a standalone. Um, so basically what I'm going to see here is a VHS video recorder. Now the one I've got upstairs I think no longer works and it's part of a TV VHS video recorder combo. So, but it's not specifically that I'm thinking about, it's the standalone, standalone video recorders. I mean I remember we had a first one roughly about 82, 83 and uh, it was a massive big thing, it was like a, a Ferguson, it was like a cock water. Uh, it had an old control and a wire, it made a hell of a racket when you press the, the play button and stuff like that. But oh, I just remember it was just exciting and special back then when we were kids. You know, we all had each, me and my brothers and even my mum and dad, we each had their own tape. Like John's tape, do not do not tape over. And we would tape like, episodes of Top of the Pops and various bits like that. And to, to this day I think my mum and dad have still got some of those tapes in the house. And, in my parents' house, it's sometimes at Christmas they get put on for nostalgia. And it's all Top of the Pops from 1983 and things like that. I'm sure we'll get the 1000 episode of Top of the Pops on a tape, um, hosted by Jimmy Savile. <coughs> um, the less said about that, the better. Um, I've still actually got about, I don't know, about 400 VHS videos <laughs> up in a cupboard up the stairs. I must dig them out and maybe even get a cheap video recorder. Uh, to play them on. Um, I mean, most of them probably got about, I don't know, 100 back tapes that have got all stuff taped off the TV on them, like films and old episodes of Red Dwarf and things like that. I really should, I would love to dig through all those tapes and see what's on them, it would make for an interesting viewing. And I also got a lot of kind of original videos, I've got, I think I've got the first three series of Red Dwarf on the original VHS tapes and a lot of films and things like that. It's a video recorder, definitely very much missed. Been replaced by DVDs and Blu-rays and even streaming services now, obviously. Also, I, I always thought it was quite cool, you could punch a little video plus number into later VHS recorders and um, get your programs taped uh, with ease. Actually, I got these the wrong way around. I'd written them down in a, in a different order, but it doesn't matter. The what was supposed to be the second one, maybe the third one, whatever. Uh, so the next one is very similar to a couple of Chris's. Uh, Chris's Chris mentioned a jukebox and um, a CD changer. Well, I'm taking the record player. Um, now, one in particular I remember having. But I mean, we had a few. <laughs> we had a big sideboard with a record player in it, but that's not the one I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about the one where you could put six records on it, uh, and whenever the first record would play, the next one would drop down. <laughs> it's actually, for the time, it's a brilliant piece of kit. Um, you could put seven inches and twelve inches and albums on it. And I used to love collecting vinyl. I've not got any. Well, I had, actually I do have some. I've got a big case full of them in, in my cupboard. But I think it's my mum and dad's. My, my own personal collection I gave away for free to a local DJ, stupidly. But I had tons and tons of stuff that I miss having, like you know, things like picture discs and stuff like that. Um, but particularly the record players went about was the one with the six. We could put a six on it. Absolutely fantastic. And the needle would go to the next one and stuff. Excellent. So. That's three out of the way, so we're on to the last one, and the last one is a watch. Yeah, yeah, most people still get watches nowadays, but for me personally, I no longer wear a watch because I use my mobile phone to check the time. But I'm not particularly talking about any watch. The kind of watch I'm specifically thinking about here um, is a Casio calculator watch, which I had when I was younger, or even just 
even just that an old old style Casio watch with all the different features on it, but specifically I think the one with the calculator on it holds a bit of nostalgia. Um, I mean that was cutting edge back then. And, yeah, a, fo- a, a watch with a, with, a cal- with a calculator on it, brilliant. Um, yeah, but I've not worn a watch for many years due to the fact that I've got the phone now and I can just check the clock on there at any time I like. But I've, I've been considering these um, smart watches that are coming out. I think if I, if I was going to start wearing a watch again, I'd be able to get one of those smart watches um, that you can kind of sync with your phone. I don't know if Apple have got one out or not. I'm sure they probably have, but I think the one I've seen is a uh, Samsung. I think Samsung have got one smartwatch. So, um, yeah, I would be interested in something like that, perhaps. Or maybe even just get a nice watch. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, did not want to watch for many years. My dad, my dad's obsessed with watches. He wants to have a collection of about 40, 40 watches, um, each to their own. But, yeah, I don't, I've not really seen a need for a watch for a long time, but, I really have four memories of the calculator watch, so that's my four. So John is another one there to highlight the VHS, which is great. Um, it does to have that bit. I think for people from that era, from that bygone era, uh, we do have that sort of fondness for the old cassette, don't we? Uh, VHS. Uh, no one mentioned Betamax. What was that? What's Betamax, everyone says. Don't know what Betamax is. Everyone that's under 20 years old, research it. Find out what Betamax is. Or Betamax, as, as, as our American friends might call it. And the Walkman, of course. I mean, I think John is alluding to, of course, the traditional Walkman. It's so the cassette with the auto reverse. I had one like that. With an equaliser on the front. On the When you open the, the flap with a cassette, when it had an equaliser on the front. <laughs> They were brilliant, very unreliable, but they were brilliant, massive great chunky things. One tape, of course, none of this MP3 phone stuff, iPod shenanigans going on, that was it, one tape, and what you put on that tape was what you listened to and you searched through with a rewind and auto-reverse and, oh, brilliant. I mean, I got through so many Walkmans in my time, the original Sony Walkman, I had a couple of them, I had a Toshiba one, I had an Awa one. Awa, what if I'm to Awa? God, br- I had two Awa ones, and that was bloody brilliant, it was like a brick. It was literally like, it was huge. It was like three times the size of the cassette. But it was, I loved it, I really loved it. And they were so expensive as well for the time, the top of the range ones were really expensive. Um, and a watch, yeah, it, oh, it was me band gone. See, I normally wear me band in places of that. No watch. Of course, we don't have watches because most of us have these now. So we don't need watches anymore. A watch now is more of a piece of jewellery, isn't it? I mean, it's more of a part of, part of, the, part of your way you dress. Not, it's, not, it's not for practical things anymore. So, great highlighting a watch. Certainly, certainly, certainly. And of course, as uh, Sticky, 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 uh, sorry Mark, uh, Stickhead just alluded to, of course, is records as well. And uh, specifically record players. Uh, for John's case, and I did smile when I when I was listening to his video, when he said about the multi drops. Uh, used to get these, yeah. They were they were orange. They were orange boxes, typically orange boxes, and they'd fold down, and they had this great big thing stick in the middle of the turntable, and with a hook, a little click there, and you could put about ten, fifteen records, like John says, on top, and it would. The, the stylus would lift up, move across when the when, when the first record had finished. It would drop the next record down. The stars would come back on, going and keep playing and playing and playing. And if you'd left it alone to do what it did, you'd eventually have the stylus. And then there's a the turntable. You'd have the stylus all the way up here because it piled up this high with records. <laughs> but it was brilliant. It was. I had. I had, yeah. I had two of them. I had one with built-in flashing lights. That that was fucking cool. And built in flashing lights in the speakers. The sound quality was terrible, but the flashing lights just made it for me. I love that thing. Got it from. Uh, it was the precursor to Littlewood's catalogue. I can't remember what they were called now. But anyway, well done, John. Uh, brilliant response. All of you are br- brilliant responses. And thank you very much for entering the party for some. That was this week's winner. This week, this month, this six weekly winner. There we go. 
All links are down in the description box if you want to see the original videos. Now, turning my pages to grab my notes. Friday foursomes, six, four answers, and make sure it's four, please, people, make sure it's four. Now, recently I met a couple of game developers and interviewed them. You've probably seen the video uh, at Play Blackpool, and they were. I uh, I admired them a lot when I was growing up. Uh, I played a lot of their games. I played a considerable amount of Codemasters games, and a lot of the Codemasters games they were involved in, especially one of my favourite characters of all time is Dizzy, as you are all aware. But it got me thinking about a question. Now, this is going to be a twist on the old dinner guest question. The dinner guest question, but this is gaming related. Let's keep it gaming related this time. So the question is for four gaming dinner guests. Who would you pick? Dead or alive, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter how tenuously they are related with gaming or not, as long as they have something to do with the gaming industry at some point in their career, that's fine. And what you would talk about, what, what, why would you pick this guest? So I'm going to crack on straight away, and you know who's coming first, don't you? Yes, you do. Sir Lord Alan Sugar. Lord Sugar. Uh, you're fired. You know him. <laughs> For obvious reasons to talk about Amstrad, to talk about how the CPC came about, to talk about the failure of the GX1000, to talk about Amsoft, to talk about all the policies and the ideas he had and and the, and, and the acquisition of Spectrum and everything like that. I need sugar. I need sugar on my table. It makes everything taste sweeter. Um, my second guest would be a writer, journalist, gamer. Uh, from the classic um, video game magazines, so we're talking computer video games, meme machines, and Nintendo magazine system back in the 90s, late 80s, and that would be Julian Ringle, Jazz Ringle sometimes known as, and he appeared on things like Games Master and other, sh uh, I, think it was, I think he did appear on Games World maybe at one point, but he was heavily involved in <clears throat> a lot of the magazines during that time when the Mega Drive and the SNES were out. Obviously the NES and the Master System, Game Boy and all that business as well. And he had a lot of things to say and I would like to discuss with him his days there and how, how, how he thinks what gaming is like now compared to back then and from, a, from his point of view. It would be very, very interesting to discuss with him. So yeah, Julian Ringle is my uh, second guest. My third guest, I can't want me bloody writing it. Oh yeah, the developer, original creator, the programmer of Secret of Mana, my favourite SNES game, and that's Nazir Gabelli. Now he had had a hand in the early Final Fantasy games as well, Final Fantasy 3 I believe, uh, maybe 2, uh, possibly, but certainly a, a considerable amount of the Square games in that in that era. So we're talking about the very about the 1990s on to 1994 kind of era. So yeah, I would definitely want to speak to him about how he went about programming uh, Mana and how he came up with the ring system, um, why he thinks it's it's held in such fond memory now, and uh, should should there be a remake? I'd love to see a Mana remake, wouldn't you? There's a there's a there's a video doing doing the rounds. I think um, that that the demos a 3D version of what the what Mana might have looked like, or may have looked like. Um, but yeah, definitely have him on the table to discuss everything secret of mana, to discover the secrets of mana, if you will. And finally, finally my last guest, <clears throat> not specifically gaming related, but I would pick the games master himself, Sir Patrick Moore. And there's several things I would like to discuss with him, uh, not just about games master, I mean I've listened to interviews with Dominic Diamond when he talks about it. He said he hardly ever met, I, mean, I, think, he, I think he might have met uh, Patrick Stewart, uh, Patrick Stewart, didn't meet Patrick fucking Stewart, Patrick Moore once uh, during the filming of Game Master, because it was all pre-recorded and he was superimposed into the Game Master get-up and all the graphics and all that, and uh, it's common knowledge that Patrick Moore didn't know what he was talking about, he was just given words and said, oh, say what this cheat is, and oh yes, I know what this is, just say it like you knew. Uh, love to discuss that with him. Of course, he's sadly not with us now. But hey, the rules can be broken. The rules of the netherworld and physicality and whatever can be broken on the Friday foursome. 
So, I would also like to speak, speak with him about other things that are not gaming related. Obviously, his interest in astronomy, that's something that interests me a lot. And uh, his political views as well. I'm not going to go into a big political thing here, but I'd like to discuss his political views, his conservative political views, and discuss certain things about that as well. So that would be my four gaming dinner guests. So what are your four the gaming dinner guests? This is the Friday Foursome 6. Please make your responses. Uh, I, will, as always, will link to them into my Facebook page, which is linked down below. Either post them in the comments or post them on my Facebook or send me a personal message. It's entirely up to you the way you want to communicate that. But make sure you do tell me about it because I want to get it on the page so we can get the votes clocking up. I will make this a monthly thing now. Next month there will be a Friday Force of Seven. So four weeks from now there will be another one. So get your video responses in. Uh, hopefully that's a better question for people to wrap their heads around. And an easier one. But certainly an interesting one. I hope so. I hope you do find it a fun question to answer. So four gaming dinner guests. Um, that's it for this Friday Foursome. Thank you for watching. Thank you for still sticking with me on the Friday Foursome. Uh, it's still going. If you want it to keep going, just tell me. If you want it, if you want me to shut up, you want to say no bug. Pack the Friday Foursome in. I'll pack it in. But I've certainly got uh, after this. I've got at least two more episodes to do. At least, at least two more pretty tricky questions, which I'd like to get out there. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. As I say, everything you need to know is in the description box. Link to my Facebook, link to all the guys that did the responses, the winners, should I say, for the responses for this Friday Foursome. And I will see you on the next Friday Foursome. Nova Bug.